What's up, guys? Neckbeard here. Let's finish up this VR Pac-Man experience. I've kind of thought thought it through, and you know, I've done a couple tests. So the easiest way we can do this is to do a save as, because we're going to need pretty much everything in this prototype scene. So I'm just going to do VR Pac-Man test. All right, so now you got your whole VR Pac-Man test here. Everything here is working. We could shut off this floor. We're not going to need that. We are going to need, you know, the joystick, the XR rig, and this, this spawn point right here we're going to want to keep. So in our VR management, we have all these teleportation angle uh, anchors. We could delete these guys. And all we need is this one. And we can pull them into the XR rig for now. Just because that's going to help make it easier to move around. And if you want to do the same with the joystick and the canvas, just pull it all into the XR rig. And now all we have to do is move the XR rig and everything moves with it. All right. Now, if you notice, if you've been following along, you know, we scaled down our Pac-Man scene quite a bit. So I'm going to take this to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0.5. And this is our scale. If that seems too big for you, you could, you know, you could scale it down or scale it up, but that's the scale that I'm going for. So my X and my Y are at a 150. Let's see what the Z does. Let's create let's let's crank the Z up to 150 also. Make it a little taller. Maybe that maybe that's a little too tall. Go 125. All right, these guys too. We got to go this middle one. Remember that's a separate game object. And this guy never doesn't look like I ever scaled this guy. That's the door. Let me get that URP material. Go blue. What do we do? Sphere? No, grid light. There. All right. The other thing we have to do is set our navigation. So you see my nav mesh is still that small little, it, you know, the nav mesh is baked, so that's the tabletop nav mesh. So let's clear that up and then just make sure I had the nav mesh on this path. Make sure your path is on or it won't find it. So that's the only piece of nav mesh I use. That, you know, that's the only piece that is walkable is this path I created in Blender. So let's bake that. And that's a perfect nav mesh path now. You can see like how well that's going to work. That's cool. All right. The other thing we have to do, we might as well get it done now, is in our Pac-Man prefabs, let's pull these guys out. <clears throat> We're going to unpack them and let's just add a VR, VR power pellet prefab and VR, I didn't name that one, just pellet, I guess. Maybe I'll name it pellet, VR pellet. And then 
let's see where these guys are at. Now you can see like how small they are. They're 0 0.3. Let's just let's try to go to uh, 0 0.5 and see what that gives us. 0 0.5, 0 0.5 might be too big. Let's go point two on these. I'm trying to, I don't, we got to just kind of come up with a size that looks good. I think a little bigger. Let's go like point three five. Make sure you keep the point in there. And then on the VR power pellet, let's try 0.75. So our spawn points and everything that we have serialized they're all in the still in the proper place. So all we have to do is create these new prefabs. And then we could delete these and then in our Pac-Man game controller, we have our prefabs right here. So VR pellet where the sphere is and VR power pellet where the power pellet is. And everything else is the same. So now we're spawning the bigger power pellets. All right. So that's pretty much the whole setup. So what we could do here is we could pull this guy back. I want to put him up on this wall here. And if we put the the uh, teleport device right here on top of the wall, we'll know exactly the height. That we need to be and that's why I said let's pull all this guy all this into here and then now I think if you have your XR rig everything like I have here in the VR management I'm gonna pull it out for now and it's just gonna make it a little easier to work with and then I'm gonna pull out the joystick <clears throat> we don't want the joystick to move around with the XR rig so if it was parented in that XR rig it's gonna turn and everything all right so we're all set up there let me get a top view see what it looks like so we're pretty straight on forward here everything looks good and it's exactly how we had it so nothing should be a surprise copy world placement and now pull that guy out you'll see it snaps somewhere I don't know what's happening there and then we'll just paste world placement so now we got it back Something with Unity and canvases. So we're set up there. We're set up there. It's kind of like Blender and child objects when you move them around when they're just nested. But it doesn't happen with everything else. You can see the joystick stayed exactly where it was. Just a canvas. Maybe because it's a rec transform. Not sure. So this just has a regular transform. All right, so we got that all set up. We got got that all set up. And the reason why we're going to do this is because we need a canvas that we need a canvas that's connected to Pac-Man, and then we also need a world canvas. So let's duplicate this, and then we'll name this the like player canvas.
So we know that that's going to get connected to the player. If you want to get rid of this, make it clean and just keep everything nested real nice here. So here we know this is going to go into the player. Now here's our world canvas. We could put this world canvas back into VR management. <clears throat> and in our world canvas, we could turn off the button panel and the combination panel. You might want it somewhere else. And then here's our Pac-Man score panel. And this is the one the game controller is, is connected to. It's not connected to this one. In your player canvas, we could turn off we could turn off the combination panel and the Pac-Man panel. And let's go ahead and apply all our all our overrides to the prefab and then let's open this prefab in context so we could kind of see what's going on. So in our button panel, let's pull out this Pac-Man button. Let's create a UI panel. Pull the panel out of the button. Now you'll see like it's the same size. So we can click over here and we could pull this. And that's the joystick right there. So now we'll have like a base. And then let's click back on the arrows. We'll pull this reset button a little closer. Let's get a top view. I'm going to grab this and just center it. Something something like that. Who knows? We might want something else here. We have the we have the lives text. I think let's see. That I think is on The Pac-Man, yeah, that's going to be the lives text on the other one. So we could grab this and just throw it in this panel. And now we have our lives text here. And we could connect that, say that like this text equals the Pac-Man panel text. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm going to save that. So this is the lives text here. And what we might want to do is have the lives text the same as this text. So I'm going to copy I'm going to copy the position only and then on the lives text I'm going to paste that. I think it's supposed to save one up, not lives. And you can rescale everything if you wanted to, but I'm just going to leave that be for now. So we'll have the lives text up here. This is the one that's connected to the game controller currently. So we'll have to add the code for, for this uh, live text that's in our control panel. So I'm going to name this control panel. And if you want to do your overrides, So you see, it's, it's even changing up here. All right, perfect. Everything looks good. What we want to do with this Pac-Man panel is we want to make it bigger. I'm thinking like 50 and 50. That's about the size of the grid. Let's get to our arrows. Something like that. 
All right, so now everything should be set up to where we could enter the game and play Pac-Man in this enlarged world now. And the issue with the joystick and putting it on top of Pac-Man, like, say, like, we just picked our joystick and parented that to Pac-Man, is now if you got to think about it, if you're pressing forward and you turn right, it's just going to rotate to the right and move to the right. So you'll be holding it to the right, but it'll feel like you're going forward and with the code we currently have. You know, it's more of like a tr transform, uh, and it snaps the, it snaps a rotation device, and. So if we wanted to use the joystick, we'd have to change the code. If you turned it to the right, it would actually rotate Pac-Man and then push forward, and then you would go forward. So that would be like your rotation, not your trans, not like your transform position as it is now. So now it's like doesn't the rotation is fake? It is more of a forward transform and a right transform in the rotation got, uh, game object in our Pac-Man. If, you know, if you've been following along the, the whole tutorial, you'll understand what I mean. We have a rotation game object. And it just rotates whatever way you're going. The nav, not the nav mesh, but the transform controller on your Pac-Man controller is, is just is what it is. It's just moving the transform forward, or backward, right, or left. So now think about having the joystick and you're parented to the Pac-Man. You'll be moving forward when you're, you'll always be moving forward from your perspective. If you're holding it to the right, you'll be moving forward. If you go to the left, you'll be moving forward. If you hold backward, you'll be moving forward. So it gets a little confusing. So we have to come up with a different controller. Or all we'd have to do is switch our joystick controller to a rotation. So here in our Pac-Man uh, VR joystick, you could see like this is where our rotation's moving and then in our update, we're just doing like our, our transform forward and transform right. So very simple stuff here. Very simple movement for Pac-Man, which makes it easy to change. So we didn't go too involved, you know, in this controller. Yeah, and I went dark mode, so you guys think I'm like more of a pro coder. You know, the light mode was... I think uh, hurting my subscriptions. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I, I I don't mind. I I don't mind dark mode or light mode. It doesn't it doesn't matter to me. But I went dark, baby. All right. So here we go. What what else do we got in here? We got in our environment. We got all these props. So let's turn all the props off. Besides the fuse box. Let's grab that fuse box. I probably should have moved it with the controller, but it's fine. It's right over here. So just bring it over where your where your guy is so we can set this all up. So what are we going to do with this fuse box? Well, we could turn the we could turn this fuse box model off. Not the model, just the fuse box. And we keep this little controller here. And we could turn the fuse and the fuse slot off. It's something you might want to do in Pac-Man. And then we could go like 0.5. No, not on the fuse slot. On this fuse box lever, we could go 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and... And the Z, we go like 0.75. All right, let's just go 0.5. Maybe 0.6. Just a little bit 
larger on the on the Z axis. All right, so this could get a little confusing. So you got to think, okay, so the top is the top. So that's the off position. The down is the on position, right? And then our rotation, our rotation is our X axis. See that? So we take the fuse box and say we go to zero, let's unpack this fuse box just so we don't screw up the fuse box. So unpack fuse box and we can name this, uh, I'm just going to call it like tank lever. And I'm going to put a little zero here. All right, so you got your tank lever. And now this has this dial interactable script. And it should all be set up, you know, if you, if, if you get the, if you follow the tutorial and get the, the GitHub uh, repo, it, this, all this stuff is all set up for you. So you got your dial interactable. And what that gives you is like a grab and then you, it rotates. So that's all we really need to do is rotate this and read this rotation. And we don't necessarily have to mess with this dial interactable script at all. What else I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, I'm going to just fancy these up a little bit. You can go yellow. You can go orange. I wouldn't do any of these uh, ghosts because they're shaders. You could get something similar. You know, I mean, they would drag on the rendering. So I'm just going to go red. If you wanted to bring it into Blender and put two materials or bake it and make it fancy, do whatever you want. So you want to make sure that you're moving your tank lever, right? So we want to be this way. So it looks like we want to be 270. All right, so we're pretty good there. Let's go back to our canvas. I'm just going to pull this control panel down. And let's see here. I'm going to go zero here. So on, this is on our, we don't need the control panel on there. I'm just moving things around a little. All right.
Alright. We'll see what it's like. Just cleaning up some stuff. All right, so now we got this tank lever, and we're going to duplicate that, and we can pull that over there. Actually, we don't need, even need to do that. We could just duplicate this lever. And we could name these tank lever. That makes more sense. I'm going to delete that guy and then just duplicate this one again. Final check here. And what we got to do is we got to we got to get rid of this XR grab interactable. So get rid of that. You could just remove it from this scene or you could turn it off whatever you want to do but I'm gonna remove this and then I'm gonna take this rigid body I'm gonna turn the gravity off and then I'm going to just freeze all the rot positions and rotations and the reason why I do that is because we need to have some collision info and the way this this joystick set up is with the rigid bodies and we need to because this rigid body won't collide with itself unless we have two rigid bodies so I, I, I try unless we could come up with something else because we have all these little colliders in here and for it to to get the collision info I wasn't getting it so if I take it off of this one I won't get it and if I take it off of this one I won't get it so the way that the two rigid bodies in one game object does cause a little issue so in the long in the long run with this joystick we might want to change this and go to more of like a read uh, angles like we're gonna like what I'm gonna show you next let's get the top view and we could pull this teleportation anchor over a bit just center it and let's see let's get our props let's pull the tank lever out into our environment or actually it's not in the environment it's just out in the main the main area for now and then we'll 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 nest it somewhere and i think we just need to pull those back a bit all right Give it a try. So I can move the teleportation anchor over a bit and just to the right. But there's, there's your levers. Now you can see how those levers would work. And when they're both forward, it would move Pac-Man forward. You pull this back, it would turn to the right. You pull this back, turn to the left. You know, you could put a backwards in, but we're just going to do forward and turn around. We're not going to do a backwards. So the further you push these forward, the more speed Pac-Man will get up to a certain level. And then it'll stop there. See, it snaps there. It doesn't go past. And then it snap when you let them go, they snap back. So there, you could change that snapping, but that's how I think we, I like it. So that would stop Pac-Man. Depending on, we got the code snaps it to wherever, like if you're closer to the front, it'll snap it to the front or snap it to the back. So we have to figure that out. But, you know, this is how you, I think would be the best way to control Pac-Man. So both forward, turn, turn that would be good for vr if you think about like using this stick here you know turning pac-man and then going forward and turning pac-man going forward maybe if you did something like a control stick like this and then you could 
you know, go back and forth. We'd have to, you know, change the collider and uh, make it a bit bigger for it to work perfect. But something of, of the, that, like that kind should work also. But I like this. I like this setup. This is how simple of a controller we have. We have a start pool and, you know, just our simple position. And it's a, a one or zero for our joystick controller or minus one or one and then zero for no movement. Same with Y. And the rotation game object, if, you, if you've been following along the whole tutorial, the rotation game object is the parent game object of the Pac-Man mesh and right now our camera look at. And it'll also be the parent of all of this stuff because we want it to... Well, it doesn't matter because we're going to rotate the game object with the controller, but it'll just be nice and, uh, you know, clean if we parent it in, in, inside this rotation game object. So let's go ahead and grab the tank levers, the teleportation anchor, all the way, everything. And then let's pull that into the Pac-Man game object. And then we have this control here. Let's pull it over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the teleporter right in the middle of Pac-Man's head. All right, that's close enough. I mean, we're centered there. So now we should be we're right where we want to be centered, right when we spawn or or you know teleport to this this area, and we can do it multiple ways. So we can move our XR rig a little bit better in in place here, and I think it'd probably be down here. Let's go zero. All right. So just checking everything, making sure everything looks good. I think that's going to be a perfect spot for us at least to start off with. So now back to the code. So we're not going to want to use this code. So the code from this comes from the VR joystick. So let's go ahead and turn our joystick off for now. And you know, we could come up with another code for the joystick. But let's go ahead and shut that guy off. And that then we don't have any worries about that. And basically, the joystick calls this twice, when it, when you touch the joystick and then when you release the joystick. Those are the two times that it's going to call this. So what I'm thinking is that we do is we do a joystick bool. And you could do whatever, what kind of bool you want. And then here in our if start bool, you know, we're going to do, well, one of the way, one of the easiest ways to do this is look at, you could grab this, you control C this, click here, click there. Then we'll just replace this with joystick bool and delete this. Right. So boom. Now if joystick bool, then we're going to do our old, VR joystick. So that's one easy, easy way to switch that up. So we could do an if else, we could do a, uh, we could have like a joystick bool or int, and we could do all kinds of things if we want more than one condition. But right now we either have if joystick bool or not if joystick bool. What we're going to want to grab is 
those tank levers let's go with zero dot Euler angles dot X and greater than or equal to 20 F and that's like that'll be degrees that'll be like 20 degrees so just grab this so we're going to want to make sure both of them are over 20 degrees So if both of these tank levers are over 20 degrees, let's grab these. And we're going to use this move speed again. So we're not going to need to change that. That'll still be the same move speed. It'll just change. And we'll have to change it back if we go back and forth to uh, from joystick to... VR experience in the same world if it's like a um, if it's going to be a actual scene change you should be okay but if it's like the same scene same controllers same everything you'll have to switch that up so we're going to need that that move speed and we're going to add these two together So we're going to add those two together, and then we're going to need some type of speed regulator. So let's get those in there. So we're going to have to times like some type of speed regulator. And then we'll set that, let's set that to like 0.05F for now. Just some, we've got to set it to something just so we have an idea, 0.05F. Just so we have an idea of what, it's going to be quite a bit. We're going to have to work on the speed on Pac-Man. It's not going to, you know, we have them set for a very small area. So this bigger area is going to make a, make a difference. And we could, we could like work it out somewhat with the joystick like just feeling it out but let's just go I think it's just better let's just go ahead and work it out with the tank levers all right so you got your we're, we got our move speed now so now we got a move pack man and I think we should just do a transform dot translate and we're gonna do a vector 3 forward We got to grab our time dot delta time just for the smoothness. And then we're going to times that by our move speed. Real simple. I mean, that's pretty much, that's what it's telling me. I can move it around. Reorder. All right, so a little faster this way. So there we got that. And if you remember, we have this here. So let's just grab this here. I'm going to control C on that. And I'm just going to put this. Actually, I'm going to nest it in the this if statement. So it's only going to play this one time. If we're moving forward. It's going to play the waka sound, which is on loop. So we only want to call that one time. All right. And then we can add an else statement here. And this is this here. Would I add a little minus by accident? This here, we could just flip it. And 
And this is that if the angles are less than 20. And like I said, we might have to play around with this, might have to go lower, 15, 10, but not much lower than that. Because then he won't, you know, he won't move. So he, as soon as he goes below 20, he's going to stop. All right, so now we just have to figure out the rotation. And we could add, let's just add right here a rotation speed. And... Let's put that at like 0.1F. Well, actually, we're going to set the rotation speed, so that's not going to even matter. So let's grab that rotation speed and... Let's do, let's just grab this here. And we could do just a minus here. And then what we could do here, we could do like a math, we could grab math, the absolute, and if math abs, we got to throw the rotation speed in there. Let's do, if it's greater than 1F. And now we're going to just real simply ro do the transform.rotate around. Right? That Unity has these nice, you know, transforms. So let's do transform.position so that we're only rotating around our position. We're going to do a vector 3 up. And we're going to grab the time again, time.delta time. And we're going to times that times our rotation speed. And that's our whole, that's our whole setup. That's our whole transform rotate. So that should actually move Pac-Man now and set the sounds. Everything should work. Again, we have to reset the the game uh the game for it to work so we already have all that set if joystick bool if if not joystick bool then we got a couple more if statements we got our waka sound and these these bools here just guarantee this to only get called one time not continually being called so it's like a door opening and closing All right, a control save on that. Let's give it a shot. Oh, wait, we got to pull in our, get, getting ahead of myself here. In our Pac-Man player, we got to pull in. Our, we should have the tank levers, so we got to pull those guys in there. They're here in our model. Tank lever one, tank lever two. And it might need some fine-tuning. And here's your joystick bool. 
start pool is already set, but it'll probably turn off when we reset the, you know, when I hit play, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's see. And now we could play around with the move speed. Yeah, so the start pool gets reset. Oh, I got a, I got an error here. Something with the rigid body. The teleportate. Oh yeah. So my teleportation anchor. What we gotta do is we gotta change this glyph quad to convex and let's just turn this mesh collider off for now let's see all right that's because we pulled the teleportation anchor into pac-man So not bad. We could I could adjust these a bit more. So my turns are 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 opposite. I want it to turn the other way. But my forward and stop is right. All right. So let's let me fix that. So far is looking good, guys. And let me just try real quick here. Let me grab my Pac-Man. And I'm going to switch these levers to see if that makes a difference. So I'm going to put my zero lever here and my one lever here. Yep. So you want it to like turn to the right when you have your right fist forward. And turn to the left. Right? We gotta speed those guys up a bit. My score's working. We gotta have another score here. Right, everything's working. It really looks like the last thing we need to do is speed up our our ghosts. Let's go look at the code. Ghost controller. Edit script. Let's just go ahead and add a joystick bool here. Because I don't want to lose our settings. So let's grab this joystick bool right here in our reset materials. This is where we'll be able to set it. And we're going to do if not joystick bool. And else here, let's grab this, control X, control V, control V. We're going to be 6F here. Let's control C that. And now let's drop down here. We change speed again here in the trigger enter. So let's control V there. We're going to be 7.5. And then 0.5. All right, so you got your if not joystick bool. We're going to be in our VR world. If joystick bool, we're going to be like our tabletop or whatever size, you know, but being controlled by the particular joystick. All right, so let's give it a try. Maximize on play. And now you could adjust these any way you want, like where you want them lower here or up here. I, I kind of like them up high a bit. And let's see. Oh, there they go. Sick. 
Uh oh. They got me. Like driving a bobcat. Let's get a power pellet. All the power pellets are kind of off center. There we go. Oh, that's a blast. All right, guys, you know, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial series, and we're going to continue on. We're going to continue on with in the Donkey Kong. There's, there's only a few things here that you'd have to change or add, like, and that would be to your UI if you wanted to add, like, the, you know, the score, the score, and, or have, like, a wraparound UI, or all kinds of things, you know, you could add another panel and have it come, a, you know, wrap around, and you could add your score, and your high score, or anything you wanted in there, and, you know, just find fine tune the game. I might, I'm, you know, I might come back to this game every once in a while, but I'm going to be moving on to Donkey Kong. If you have any questions, hit me up. I, I'd appreciate it. Now let me know, you know, which direction you'd like to see the channel go. And, uh, you know, I'm really, I'm really open to it. So thanks a lot for following along. I hope you like this tutorial. Neckbeard out.